What's the investment strategy for China? Well, the Chinese market is cheap. Um, I think where the valuations are concerned, um, China on a 12 months forward basis on PE is trading at a uh, 45 to 48 percent discount to um, US equities in, in, in particular. Um, earnings growth next year looks pretty all right. Um, I think it's likely to actually come in anywhere between 8 to 10 percent. Uh, and that compares pretty favorably with the uh, S&P 500, which is now currently still trading at about 16 times earnings with a um, probably 2% earnings growth in 2023. So the strategy is to basically build a barbell strategy for, for China, um, go into some of the high dividend yielding stocks, and there's certainly a number in the telecom sector and the banks as well. And of course, you can also get exposure to the Chinese internet sector, or largely the consumer sector as well, which we think will do well when the Chinese authorities start to reopen uh, the economy and, and, you know, and the property market starts to stabilize. So we think that is the kind of um, portfolio exposure that you should have on a longer term basis for China from this point in time. You, you've mentioned two massive caveats there. When the Chinese authorities start to reopen after COVID and number two, when the property markets also stabilize. The two massive overhangs right now for the Chinese markets. When yeah. do you think both of those things will occur? Yeah. Um, the zero COVID policy is likely to be, um, I think it will probably be uh, relax more uh, once the uh, National Party Congress is over because they don't want to run the risk of that Congress being disrupted because that's of key importance, utmost importance to the uh, Chinese government, to the Communist Party. Um, and we think that that will probably happen um, sometime next year in the first quarter. Um, and another reason is because they want to make sure that the vaccination rates amongst the elderly actually rises to a more palatable level uh, in that sense. Now, that in turn is likely to bring some comfort to the property market. Now, we do note that where the property market is concerned, the Cayman cities have actually um, recovered some of the sales numbers. In fact, the you know, week on week sales, one on month sales have been actually rising gradually in the tier one cities. It is the tier three, tier four cities that are pretty much still in the doldrums. Now that um, they need to actually relax the COVID-19 policies before uh, sentiment in that particular um, uh, tier can actually recover. And we're hopeful that the bottom has actually been reached and that uh, we should not see further deterioration there where sentiment is concerned.